Hello and welcome to the 2022 season of my channel. I'm Mark, your host. It's been a little while since my last video. Christmas was pretty busy, but I'm back and I have a new video that I hope you'll enjoy. Today, I'm calling it a hand tool challenge. Of course, normally, we evaluate vintage hand planes on this channel and call it the hand plane challenge. But today's video has nothing to do with planes. Today's video instead is about a new tool that I've made. What tool, you ask? Well, I've been itching to make a scratch all. Tomatoes go in the comments below. Um, there are three reasons why I wanted to make a new scratch all. One is, this is my old scratch all. All. Tough to say, for you to say. Um, did you ever have one of those moments when you were desperate to fix something and it just wasn't yielding to your efforts and you were verging on panic and you start throwing everything you've got at the problem? Well, I had one of those moments and my trusty former scratch all unfortunately paid the ultimate price and uh, it's now ruined. So I need a new scratch all. Second reason I needed to make new, wanted to make new scratch all is another silly reason really. Many years ago I needed a concrete nail. Actually I needed like four of them but you could only buy a box of 50. So I've got a whole bunch of concrete nails and I just have not been able to give them away. So I found out a, a, a little while back that these guys are actually kind of hard metal. They've been hardened to be used in concrete. And so that gave me an inspiration that maybe I could use them in place of buying a piece of M2 tool steel for, you know, significant amounts of money from some place like MSC Direct. And so, so I wanted to try that idea. So that's the second reason I wanted to make a scratch all. And the third reason is for a scratch all to work really good, and I'll use my old one here for a moment just to, the, it has to be a, you know, a pretty sharp point here. You're basically using that point to scratch the wood. And so it needs to be sharp and you need to be able to make it a point not a knife, not a flat, not anything like that. So, so you've got to, you've got to, when you're sharpening it, you've got to make it sharp on all the way around the point. And for those less coordinated folks among us, and I definitely count myself among that coterie, uh, that's, that can be a little bit challenged, but I came up with an idea for solving that problem, which is a, what, what I tried out on my new tool. Okay then, so let me uh, roll it out and we'll take a close up look at it and it'll be easy to try out. And at the after I get done with, you know, showing you the new scratch all, we'll spend just a couple of minutes at the end describing what's up for the rest of the, the season, the 2022 season for the channel. Okay then, let's get to it. 
Okay, so here it is. My new scratch roll. Not much to say. A heck of a lot less complicated than a hand plane. Basically, working end, handle. In this particular case, I, I made a switch. My previous scratch awl was more properly called a brad awl, I guess. Uh, whereas this one is definitely a scratch awl and it's made to be held like a pin when you make your scratches. So I'm trying that out. It's new for me. We'll see how it goes. So the difference in this scratch all is there's another concrete nail on this end and what that's there for you'll see in a minute I'll demonstrate you can chuck this in a drill and spin it in your sharpening medium whatever one you want diamond plates sandpaper stones whatnot and then put the lid back on and you're ready to go with your newly sharpened scratch hole. Alright, I started out with concrete nails. Um, basically I would grind the head off. I tried hacksawing the head off but these things just kind of laughed at my hacksaw so I went to the grinder instead. So grind, grind the head off and then do a rough rounding of the pointy end and then when I'm done with that I take I then I go ahead and and do the turning to assemble the tool and when I'm all done with the tool I chuck it up in the drill Here's my diamond plate, and that's me sharpening it. Helps to hold the thumb on it a little bit. It's not spinning so fast with this drill. Magnificently sharp. Alright, then, uh, so now we got our sharp scratch all. The only the last question to ask is we, we go ahead and put it back together does it actually work so, ie will it make a scratch it's going to be hard to see let's see if we can I mean, that's the whole point reason you make a uh, you can see it faintly there right in the middle but that's the whole that's one of the reasons you do a scratch all is you don't leave any ugly ink marks or whatnot but I just really like the way it glides against the side of the ruler you can see it just really well and like I say, no ugly ink or pencil marks to have to clean up. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's doing its job and it's doing it very well. Okay then, let's wrap it up. Okay then, this is my new scratch all. And it works pretty good if I do say so myself. It is pretty darn sharp out here. Makes a good scratch in wood. So I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Now, in theory, I could show you how I made this thing, i.e. how I turned it. You turners out there probably already know how I did it. You know, basically, well, it's nothing, there's no special techniques involved except to say that for the, when I got done making the axle here to finish turning, I put a double-sided piece of sandpaper in here and 
put it back together and held it on, uh, held this end in the jaws and held this end in a rotating uh, live center so that when I did the final turning, it would all come out, you know, looking like it was in one piece, which is always a plus. So you turners out there know what I'm talking about. Now, I do not count myself among the skilled turners of the, of the world. I don't even count myself among the semi-competent turners of the world. So I decided not to give a demonstration in this video about how I made this. If any of you guys that watch this are just dying to see the, you know, how to turn one of these, leave a vote in the comments section and I will take the accumulated votes for and against under advisement on whether to do a video on that subject. Okay then. Lastly, just a little bit about the 2022 season. I'm planning to broaden out a little bit. I, as indicated by the fact that this is not a hand plane video already. Um, I will continue to do vintage hand planes. The hand plane challenge. However, it's safe to say that I do not have an infinite supply of vintage hand planes, and so you know, there won't be that many more. Uh, and I'm going to sort of, but I've got lots of things that are in the works and I think would be interesting, and so I hope you'll enjoy some of the newer videos, new subjects of the videos coming up in the upcoming year. So stay tuned and we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and I always welcome comments in the comments section. I usually leave a response to those comments unless it was something, you know, that was so straightforward that it didn't really need a comment, a, a response. But I like, I like to see those comments and look forward to them. So we'll see you next time on the Hand Tool Challenge.